Hey everybody, Mike from Metacomics, here today with a special edition of Digging Deeper. Instead of the usual show I put out where we kind of talk about some specific theme from an issue that's come out uh, recently from you know Marvel, DC, or whatever. Today, I'm actually going to be joined by the awesome Sammy Reeds. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. That was nice. Hey, it's, it's true. Who runs a fantastic YouTube channel, puts out some really, really excellent videos. Uh, I enjoy them a lot, and I think you will too. And I think she's got a lot of interesting things to say about comics. So I thought it'd be cool to have her on and uh, get her perspective on some of the stuff going on right now. Of course, we're going to stay true to the format and dig into some of the deeper themes and things about comics, particularly Sammy's views on these different areas we're going to talk about. And uh, before we get to all that, though, I think we should just kind of go with a few softball questions, you know, kind of the easy stuff to get to know Sammy a little bit and uh, all that good stuff. So before we get started, though, uh, Sammy, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody where you can be found as far as your YouTube channel and social media stuff. Yeah, I can be found at YouTube.com slash Sammy Reads. Pretty, pretty easy. I was really excited when I finally got that URL, so it, I didn't have to you know, give people a bunch of numbers and letters and stuff. But yeah, so it, it's YouTube.com slash Sammy Reads, and then Pretty much all the other social media links are Sammy Reads as well. Um, Twitter is definitely the best way. I love Twitter a lot. Lots of great stuff there. Um, so Twitter is, is at Sammy Reads. Instagram, Tumblr, all that is is Sammy Reads. So awesome, nice and simple. I like it. I know. I like that too. I happened to start Metacomics right before they made that rule about having to have so many subscribers before you get your own. Oh wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. right before, like a month before they did it, I was like, oh, whew, wow. <laughs> yeah, see, I made mine right after, and I was pretty frustrated about it. I was like, "Oh man, so close!" But it's not—it's not like a huge deal, but it is something that's like satisfying, you know? Like, yeah, absolutely. All right, so we need to hear Sammy's origin story. So, Ooh. my first question right out of the gate is: When did you first get into comics, and what hooked you into becoming a, a you know long-term reader? Yeah, that's a—that's a great question. Um, I've always been—I've always enjoyed comic book things, you know, even before, like, I read them, like, growing up, like, loved Superman, loved Spider-Man, loved, loved the, the Superman movies, like, the old ones, and loved, loved the new Spider-Man movies and stuff like that, um, but I didn't really start reading, reading comics until maybe 2011, I think, which is when I graduated high school, and I think it was kind of, it, it, there were a couple different reasons I did, but mostly it was like I, I started going to garage sales and getting a lot of finding a lot of comics through there, and so I was kind of kind of collecting them semi like they're really lame stuff like Mars Attacks and like really weird stuff like that. But but um, I think I I really started uh, looking for a job once I I graduated high school and. Um, a friend that goes to my church runs a comic. He ran a comic book store, and so I decided to apply. Even though I was like, "Yeah, I, I like those characters and I like things superheroes, but I don't really read them." But um, a couple months before I decided to like officially apply, I started reading a lot, and that's when the whole New Fifty Two stuff from DC started, and that was a really good jumping on point for me to be a regular reader. And so once I started doing that, I started getting really, really passionate about reading comics and stuff, and that's kind of when uh, that's when the store owner was like, "Yeah, you should probably work for us now." So so I did that for a couple years. So that's kind of what prompted that was was definitely the the job I think. Awesome. Yeah, that you have a pretty similar uh, background as far as like the uh, getting started as a kid, like the old Superman movies. That was kind of my introduction to comics. My grandpa uh, was a huge Superman fan. He, of course, grew up with the George Reeves, like way back in the day, the wow. 50s. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was all reruns of that were constantly on. And then I got into the, you know, Donner okay. Superman as a child and why I have a tattoo of him to this day. Oh, nice. Very nice. Who's your favorite comic book character, and what is it about that particular person that fascinates you so much that you, know, you just can't help but just devour everything that comes out about that particular character? I think everybody's got that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that character might be Aquaman for me. And which is, I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Aquaman, so stupid. What a stupid. But the thing is, I mean, 
when he's written well, he's written really well. And and that's like a lot of people still kind of imagine him as the the stupid, you know, the super friends kind of writing on what what, what was he writing on? He was like writing on dolphins and writing yep. you know, being really ridiculous. Like he's not that's not the type of hero he really is. But um I think the first Aquaman stories I read were first in the New 52, like a couple issues, and I was like, this is a really cool character. And then I read the 90s run by Peter David, and that was, I mean, that's like when I was just like, Aquaman, yes, is so good. He's Sea King, and then his hand got chopped off, and he has a hook, and like, that's when he was like super, super awesome. So I, I mean, yeah, you know, he's had his ups and downs, but I think as a character, I just really appreciate the fact that while a lot of heroes like to stick to their own town, maybe where it's where they grew up or someplace that they feel passionate about or something like that, like Aquaman has responsibility like under the sea as Atlantis, like as an Atlantean. And then he also feels like he has responsibility to people like on land as well. And so I feel like that he he doesn't really belong to both worlds, but in a way he kind of belongs to both. And I just really like that he he kind of selflessly takes up that mantle as hero and decides, you know what, I'm going to help both. Even though they all think I'm kind of dumb, I'm going to help them anyway. And I really admire that. Awesome, yeah. I mean, Aquaman has been the butt of jokes forever. And I think the New 52 really took it in a brand new direction that kind of made Aquaman cool, like you were saying. So it's not just that old super friends, which is horrible. <laughs> I, I know, you know, and I think that's part of why I even picked up his book in the first place. Like, I was looking at all the, the new number ones of New 52 stuff that was on, like, the new comics rack, and I was like, oh, should I do Superman? Should I do Batman? Should I do Aquaman? And someone was like, oh, don't, don't do Aquaman. He's stupid. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it then. And then, uh, so then it was almost out of spite that I picked him up because I knew he wasn't liked. But then, but then I actually did really enjoy him. And it, I mean, man, that first volume is so, so good. It's really good. Rebel rousing. I like it. <laughs> I know. I know. It, it's, either, it's either being a rebel or a hipster. I don't know which one it was. But I, I like the rebel. The rebel sounds much better, though, I think. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Like, if someone starts going crazy, if a bunch of people go crazy over something, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go over here and try this thing. I, it's, I don't know. It's like, I just don't like being a conformist, I guess. I don't mm -hmm. know what you call it. But yeah, so I, I totally understand uh, your gravitation towards that character. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Uh, what comic book story arc had the most profound emotional impact on you that you've mm -hmm. had the chance to read? And what was it about that particular story that resonated so much? Well, the ones that I, I most like emotionally respond to are usually not the superhero ones, if that if that's okay. Like I feel like most superhero stories, like if, if they're not a superhero book, it's considered like an indie book, I guess. Like, but I, I, I don't know. But my, I, I think the one that I really had like, oh, just like an intense emotional reaction to would be um, "Sweet Tooth" by Jeff Lemire. I don't know if you've read that or heard of that. No, um, I haven't read that one. Yeah, it's published by Vertigo, and it it finished up, I want to say, two or three years ago. Um, and it has like seven or eight volumes maybe all together. Um, but it, it's just, it's kind of like a weird post-apocalyptic story about how um, the world and humanity kind of started crumbling and people started getting this really terrible disease. But, but it was weird because like kids born after a certain time started being born with animal features. Like the main character, Gus, has like antlers and like crazy ears and stuff like that. And he's really cute and fun. Um, and then he has a friend who has like a, a pig face and like there's more more animal like than people like. And you kind of follow Gus's journey. Um, and there's a lot there's a lot of really cool parallels they make with like I don't know, with like the, the Holocaust, like because people are trying to like get rid of all of the creepy animal children, even though they're not creepy, they're just, you know, they're just born like that. I don't know, it just, you follow his journey, and he's so innocent, and he just want, he just sees the best in people, but then so many, so many really sad, heartbreaking things happen to him, and you kind of have to watch him grow up, and I, I think that one definitely makes me sad just thinking about it. 
<laughs> oh, well, that's that's great though. I mean that that's what I, what I'm I, what I try to do with my channel is talk about stuff like that. Like because I think comics is more than just the superhero stuff. Absolutely. Obviously, there, there's a lot of great stuff out there. Like some of the uh, best stories that that I've read that have had an impact on me. Some of them came from like The Walking Dead. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. That's a that's a great one too. That is a great great emotional story. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's just always a lot going on there thematically to to you know dig into. And you always feel heavier after you read an issue, even when there's good things that happen. After it's over, you always kind of feel just like this overhanging sadness, like. And that, yeah, and I felt that way. I sometimes I'll have to actually like put it down and like walk away for a little bit because it it, it feels that real sometimes. I remember in Walking Dead that when um the governor is with Michonne in that one part of the comic. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. They're like trapped in Woodbit. That it was so. Oh man, that was so heavy, and I I had to stop reading for about a week because I really felt like I felt so bad for Michonne and. Yeah, it's it's uh, amazing the impact that they can have on, you know, your personal life and the way that you think about things like that. And that's what I love about comics. Mm -hmm. Though I think it's one of those mediums. It's a lot like film. Uh, you know, you can you can put those themes in there in a way that it's not just like you know beating somebody over the head with them. You have to think it through a little bit more. And so by thinking it through and meditating on those things a little bit, it hits you a little more deeply than if you were, you know, someone were just to tell you, hey, you know, this is right, this is wrong, mm -hmm. given that that situation, that fable almost to, to look at it in. That's just, I don't know, it's powerful to me. Yeah, and it's especially when it's from stories you don't really, or books you don't really expect it to come from. So, like, somebody who's reading Walking Dead is like, I just want to see zombies being splattered. And you're like, okay, but you're also going to get father-son moments, and you're also going to be faced with really difficult moral decisions, and it's going to be really emotional. And I think those, that's when it's also really impactful, is, like, when you're expecting something, and then you get, like, that deep emotional story all of a sudden. Right. Yeah. And there's been a lot of those moments in The Walking Dead, you know, the moral ambiguity, like, what do you do here? Because this isn't, you know, in a, in a world where there's a stable society, you know, a stable government rules, laws, this choice would be simple. You just don't do it. <laughs> but mm -hmm. when you're in this world and you, you have to think of survival and limited resources and all those other things, what do you do about a guy like Negan or the governor? Right. You, can't, you can't let those guys if you let those guys live, they're going to pose a threat to a lot of people over a long stretch of time. So is it morally wrong to kill that person that you know is evil that's doing these things? But at the same time, you have to compromise on what you formerly believed about mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. So I don't know. I love that stuff, even though it twists me up for a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that it, it makes you ask the question, what would I do? And I, that, that's what I love it. I love it when comics do that. And Walking Dead, both the TV show and the comic, make me wonder that all the time. And I love it. It's so good. Now, if you could kind of like be the head of the creative team over a Marvel DC crossover event... Like Ooh. let's say that they want to do a big crossover event Ooh. and you could create a team of heroes that's kind of comprised of people from both sides. Who would you put on the team and what would your basic plot be for something like that? Hmm. That's a good question. My my first like gut reaction is that I would want it to be like a ridiculous comedy. Just because I, I think that he you have like combining characters like Batman who is so very brooding and so very intense with like the Guardians of the Galaxy like seeing him try to interact with Groot or Rocket I just feel like would be hysterical I could see that <laughs> so yeah I would want it to be I would want it to be like really really funny um, and even though like I'm not a huge uh, Deadpool fan I feel like if we threw him in with some of the DC people it would be really funny oh yeah. I would love to see Batman and Deadpool. That would be hilarious too. <laughs> I think I think Batman might actually break his no killing rule for Deadpool and just try to like break him in half. I feel like he he would get done with him so fast. Yep, yeah, yeah, he's not one to tolerate much of the mouth. So <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that is that that would be seeing him with Groot though. That <laughs> yeah, and Star Lord. Star Lord's kind of an irritating guy too. He, like he you know? is. Yeah, man. Like I mean, I feel like. Classically, I'd be like, oh, I'd, I'd love to see how Superman and Captain America work together because they're so very, they like, for me, they like epitomize like American freedom, good, good Boy Scout kind of thing. 
And that, while that would be great to see, I mean, I feel like it, the adventures would be pretty predictable. Like, I would, I would just enjoy seeing someone who's, like, really intense with someone really silly trying to do something serious, and then it just goes completely awry. Yeah, the best kind of combinations are the ones of characters uh, where they have the opposite personality. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Superman and Captain America, pretty similar in their value system. Yeah, so exactly. That, that wouldn't create the drama or the comedy, the tension that would be needed there to make it interesting. So, yeah, you'd have to you'd have to pair. I don't know who would be a good DC pairing for Captain America. You can't say Batman every time because. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. No. <laughs> Even though I love Batman, but it's one of those things. Uh, you know, I don't know. There, there's probably somebody out there that would put some some strain on that you know value system that would. Or be even maybe someone that's not human because Cap is very like every human life is precious, and so I wonder if maybe you paired him up with like a non-human like Wonder Woman who's like an Amazon. I don't know. Well, no, see, but they would get along well because they've kind of grown up in the war environment, right? Right. Like the training, so they actually they would get along really well. I think Cap I think Captain America would just get along with everybody. He's just too nice. Like who would yeah. he be who would he be frustrated with? The only time I've ever really seen him be frustrated is with the Punisher in the Civil War series, the, mm. the original one from two thousand six. That makes a little sense. That makes a lot of sense actually. Yeah, I mean, you know, he he pretty much beat the snot out of him, so I mean, it was one of those things like, wow, you know, like So maybe an anti hero Captain yeah. America would not be friends with then. Yeah, so it would definitely have to be somebody that's an anti-hero for that to really be an interesting combination. But <laughs> it's it's interesting that you say that though about Cap, you know, getting along with everybody. Like I, one person I thought of, and this would be weird, but um, I think it was last year's run of Justice League when uh, Lex Luthor was part of that. Oh yeah, yeah. Imagine Lex Luthor and Steve Rogers trying to work together on something. I don't know. That just seems weird to me, given his. His background. I mean, yeah, I think I think he would definitely see him as like another. I don't know. I Captain America does not like it when like somebody tries to like control everyone else, given his you know World War II kind of background thing. So I don't think he would trust Lex at all. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think that would be interesting. I think he would look at Lex Luthor kind of like he does Tony Stark as someone who has the potential to possibly be yeah. something more than what they are, but their flaws are so amplified by, you know, what they go after, their their ultimate goal. They always have something else really under the surface for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. it's and that's honest. interesting. That's interesting that you said Tony Stark too, because Tony does have a very troubled past as far as like his alcoholism and stuff like that. But I just think Cap would view I I don't I don't know actually, because he could he could either see it as like, oh well, Lex and, and Tony are in the same place now, as in moving forward, they kind of see the future as trying to help humanity, but they're, they're, they do have troubled pasts, but I mean, they're very different. I mean, like, Lex's was not, I don't know, I felt like Tony's was more kind of an internal struggle, and Lex's was very external, trying to control, you know what I mean? So I don't know how Cap would view that, if he'd be like, oh, the past is in the past, it just matters what you see now or if he would remember that i don't know yeah like i think lex's struggle has always been he's jealous of the attention that superman's always oh, gotten absolutely. absolutely because before superman came everybody looked at him like a godlike figure mm -hmm. because of his money and influence well so he needs that kind of affirmation from other people to feel his own value and worth whereas tony he already is well secure and how other people view him. He, just he really is, yeah. He, maybe he has a little too much ego, but you know exactly. what? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, though, his struggles are internal. Mm -hmm. the, the only person that Tony can never get acceptance from is Tony. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's and like, that doesn't hurt anybody else. Like, Lex's struggles, I mean, hurt a lot of people. So I, I oh, just yeah. the difference there, so... Yeah, definitely. What what would you do for a story for something like that? I don't know. That, see, that's where I struggle, is coming up with a story that would bring both of these teams together like these characters together and pose a big enough threat that it was necessary maybe it'd have to be something like they're all like trapped on on a planet together or on an island i i, I was gonna say island but then i was like that seems too small it seems like one of them would be able to figure their way out of that like maybe a distant planet i don't know where they'd ha they would have to work together somehow Right, like almost maybe even an alternate reality, because we all know that's the big popular thing <laughs> over the last yeah, year or two. Yeah, they're, they're focusing that a lot. I mean, they kind of 
they kind of did that with Convergence stuff when they were stuck underneath the domes. But I mean, they didn't have to. They didn't really have to like work together. I mean, right. I guess they did. I don't know. But I I don't know. I don't know what it would take. Yeah, that's a hard one. That's I, one of the reasons they probably don't do that much anymore. Marvel back in the day in DC used to do some stuff like that every once in a while where they would cross over, like there was Superman versus Spider Man. Uh, that was an interesting little story run there where uh, Superman read all the Daily Bugle stuff about Spider-Man. Oh, there you go. And it was like, oh, so he's a bad guy. I need to stop this oh, spider That's guy. a bad source material he's getting that from. <laughs> exactly. So they did stuff like that in Hulk or, uh, versus Superman was another one. But mm -hmm. I they haven't done that in a really long time. I think it would be cool to see that. Yeah, it definitely would. But like you said, it just has to have a good storyline for it or else people would get bored with it and they're like, well, wh why are they even working together? So it have to be interesting enough. 